Then spake Jesus to the multitude and his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, and therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. He said, and listen to their word, but don't do with what they're doing. Uh -huh. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, and they make broad their electories and enlarge the borders of their garments. Zach touched on that some uh, last time he taught. And love the uppermost rooms at feast, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are his brethren. And we'll skip to 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, Jesus is giving warnings. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, and hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weight weighted for weightier, weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you do have done, these ought you to do have, have done, and not to leave others undone. You bind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. <laughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. And lastly, thou bind thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, and the outside of them may be clean also. Amen. Bless your reading. This chapter records Jesus' last public sermon. Most of his salvations, or most of his uh, sermons were either on salvation, resurrection, morality, a lot of them on forgiveness, but this one here was a warning to false leaders and teachers and preachers. You're right. In the verses, Jesus warns the people about false religion, religious leaders in Israel. Then he warns his disciples first. He warns the disciples and true spiritual leaders not to mock false teachers. You know, because... There wasn't a Bible available for everybody that time. There wasn't multiple churches like you see here. Come on, Eddie. People relied on these people. These, and he's warning them, hey, don't want to look like these people. Don't act like these people. Listen to the word, but don't be like them. And it reminds me of a story I've heard. Some of us always, and I've been there, you always want to preach like Richard Harold. You want to teach like Ronnie Vance. God's saying, be yourself. He'll make that way gotcha. right, for you. Because I was listening, and it took me back. Uh, some time ago, I was listening to an old preacher. He was saying this woman, or no, Betty's not here, a woman named Betty had got <laughs> in a real bad accident. She's getting ready to cross over, and she sees God and says, God, am I going to die? He says, no. I'm going to let you live 25 years and two months. She's in the hospital and uh, done a bunch of corrective surgeries and operations on her. As she's nearing the end of her stay, she decides, I'm going to have a nose job, a tummy tuck, a facelift, <laughs> and some other operations before I go. The day she's released, She's leaving the hospital. Here comes an ambulance coming in hard to the ER, runs over and kills her. And she got meets with God and says, Lord, I thought you was going to let me live 25 years and two months. He went, well, Betty, I would have, but I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Be yourself. Be yourself. So Jesus then turns his attention to false leaders. And you got to think back, since the fall of man, there's always been false leaders, false teachers, 
people who wants to represent represent right. themselves being close to God, but they're not. And the Bible says they honor me with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. Yeah. And in the next chapter, Jesus goes on to say, There will rise false Christ and false prophets who will show signs and wonders that will deceive the very elect. So he's talking about in chapter 23, he's talking about that current day and time, but then he warns the people for a prophetic warning. You're right. Paul says in Galatians 1 and 8, if anyone preach another gospel unto you other than which we have preached, what you hear here, mm -hmm. let him be accursed. Yeah. And scripture makes it clear in the, that the second coming, of, when the second coming of Christ approaches, they'll be counterfeiters of the gospel and they'll multiply. And they'll have a powerful influence and also a large following. So in verses 1 through 7, Jesus spoke directly to the multitudes and the disciples. And you know, just like any other chapters, it seems like when Jesus was speaking, the Pharisees and the scribes were always close. They were always listening to what he had to say. So bet they were close. And the scribes, what the scribes were, when they were a group of people that after the Jews had returned from their 70 years of captivity, like Ezra, their responsibility was to rewrite, to keep the law. They would write the law. That's who made those type Bible. That's who, that, that was the word. That's how the word was uh, from pen to paper. Was the scribes? Ezra was a scribe. So they were responsible for copying and preserving God's law as the years advanced after that captivity. The Pharisees, of course, they were the dominant religious group at that time that numbered somewhere northward of 6,000. So the, then the scribes became authorities in Jewish law. And when the people looked for religion, when the people looked for the word of God, they depended on scribes and Pharisees. In verses two through seven, Jesus gives several characteristics of the Pharisees and the scribes, the unbelieving Pharisees and scribes. It says they had seated themselves in the chair of Moses. They seated themselves. Yes. False leaders have no authority whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And he's saying here they had no authority to sit in that chair they seated themselves. Uh -huh. right. They had not been appointed by God to sit in that chair. Mm -hmm. They hadn't been elected. And some of what that's referring to is much like this is built up here in a synagogue or the church. This is elevated. I guess people come, they would sit in a chair at that time and read the law. They had appointed themselves. And here's why. For the Jews, Moses was the supreme lawgiver. Sure was. He, he was the supreme lawgiver. You're right. The Jews considered him You're right. just... He, he was the man in that time. He was considered the supreme spokesperson for God. So to sit in that chair, to sit in Moses' chair, that was huge. That was tantamount to Jewish people. You're right. You were, a, uh, you were the uh, elite if you got to sit in that chair. And it was for this reason that they started to become envious of Jesus. And they were always looking for ways to undermine him. But Jesus said in John chapter 10, starting at verse 8, all that ever came before me were thieves and robbers. Oh my. Yeah. It says, but the sheep did not hear him. Come on, he here. says, I am the door by me. If any man come in, he shall be saved mm -hmm. and go in and out and find pasture. Yes. You're right. He says, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, right. but I am come that they may have life and have it more than yes. yes. Amen. So in verse 3, he's saying, all they tell you to do, do it and observe. They were demanding others to do things that they couldn't do themselves. He says, do and observe. In other words, if they speak God's truth, you got to do it. Right. If somebody walks out of the beer joint down there, drunk and he comes up to Andy Purdue and says hey you can't talk about your neighbor you can't murder 
can't do all that. When he's reading from the Word of God. He's correct. You got to listen to it. Yeah. But when he goes back to the beer joint, don't follow him back in there. Yeah. And do as he's doing. You're right. Eh? The Word of God is still the Word of God, even in the mouth of a false teacher. Jesus is saying, "Do as they do, as long as the true Word of God it is the true Word of God." Yes. <clears throat> but he said, "But do not do according to your deeds." The scribes and Pharisees did occasionally teach the Word of God. They just didn't practice it. And I know we've all heard that. Preach what you practice. They lived only in the flesh and by the power of the flesh. In Romans chapter 3 verse 20 says, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Flesh has no power to restrain evil or to do good. Nothing in us that we can do for that. Maybe. You're all sinners saved by grace. We can have an outward appearance of morality and do good, but you can never live up to them. I can walk the face of this earth. I can do every deed for a widow, an orphan, or for anybody else. But if I'm not under the blood, it's of no avail. Amen. That's right. You're right. Verse 4 says, They bind heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders. I taught this the last time a little bit. For example, they had already taken the Sabbath day and made it a day of a burden. That day of rest became wearisome mm -hmm. because there were so many man-made regulations that went outside the scope of what God had intended. Jesus said they pile up heavy burdens, religious regulations, rules, and rituals on men's shoulders until they're unbearable and impossible to carry. Set up for failure. I said when I thought about this, how many of you, you don't have to show your hands, have been, feel like you've been set up for failure on something? Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah, sometimes. I said when I was, uh, Ronnie talks about Paul DeBoard. His son was my drill sergeant in the academy 20 years ago. I love that man, but he <clears throat> set us up for failure constantly. And uh, it, when you're set up for failure, you really don't realize it at the time, but it, it drives me nuts that I can't accomplish something. Yeah. And that's what the state police did for you for so long, and it, uh, it humbles you. You can't accomplish what you're trying to do, and it creates such a, a burden on you of defeat that you sometimes you really don't even want to go on any further. And that's what they were doing here. It added, added a burden of guilt and frustration for their failure. And can you imagine that here if Richard stood behind the pulpit and preached to you all some of the man-made regulations? It makes you really appreciate the church. Yeah. makes you really appreciate a preacher. The more and more I'm out, the more and more I truly appreciate what you do. Uh, because if he sat in here and you came in here constantly, that you were beat down, how many of you would really want to yeah, come back? Come on, Not me. Right. I wouldn't. Right. I beat myself down enough. I don't need to hear it from anybody else. Amen. There's a lack of genuine desire for them to serve God. <clears throat> all the religious activities and deeds that they did were to be noticed by men. Everything is done for an outward show mm -hmm. rather than from the heart. Right. They wanted self-gratification for their egos opposed to self-service for God. They were only able to make a good showing for the flesh and not for God. It was all about me. Their purpose was to glorify themselves and not God. And when they prayed on the street and in, in the synagogue, they did it with extravagance to draw attention to them. And when they fasted, they went out of their way to make sure everyone knew about it. Mm -hmm. And woe is me. Yeah. They wanted everybody to know that they were hungry and weak. Verses 6 and 7, Jesus is saying the scribes and Pharisees love places of honor. They wanted to be at the host table in order to be at the center of attention. They'd show up for a dinner, the host, they 
wanted to make sure that they were sitting next to the host. That way all eyes were upon them. <clears throat> they gloried in being given places of prestige and eminence. They liked that prosperity. And as modern churches have, like I said, the synagogues had these raised platforms like they did. That's where they always wanted to sit. They loved to have respectful greetings in the stores. They loved to be called rabbi. That was a prestigious name, to be called or a title. They wanted to be treated with special honor. The word rabbi carried meanings such as great one, supreme one, or excellency. That's why they like to be called that. In verse 8, Jesus said, But <clears throat> be not you called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. So contrary to the Pharisees' belief, Jesus is saying true spiritual leaders are to really avoid those kind of titles. They should also be willing to accept lowly service sometimes. Yeah. Verses 23 and 26. In Deuteronomy, there are instructions for tithing produce, produce such as grains, olive oil, wine, fruits, and vegetables. The Pharisees had extended this provision to include cumin, anise. Those are plants that you can grow in a window seal mm -hmm. in your kitchen. So when the Pharisees would pick these leaves from the mints or the, or the seeds from the dill and the cumin plants, they would carefully count out the seeds and the leaves, and they count one for God out of every ten. What's work? Just counting those leaves. That's mm -hmm. what they were doing with tithing. But Jesus is saying, while they're counting out such insignificant matters as those little leaves and seeds, they're neglecting what mattered most. Oh, yeah. And that's mercy, grace, and faithfulness. Amen. And in verse 24, Jesus uses an illustration of the smallest unclean insect to the largest unclean animal. They were both ceremonially unclean. And it is said that the Pharisees would drink their wine through clenched teeth in case there was an ad in it to keep it from going in their mouth. So that was unclean. They were more concerned about tiny gnats than a big camel. In other words, they were more concerned about tradition and regulations, but they weren't concerned at all about hypocrisy, cruelty, Come on. Greed yeah. and self-worship. And then 25 and 26, Jesus curses the Pharisees and scribes for how they indignantly treat others and indulge in themselves. <clears throat> it says, you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within... They are full of extortion and excess. The blind Pharisees cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, and the outside of them may be clean also. It would be like me fixing uh, a really good meal, a lot of good food, served in a big glass of, uh, <laughs> Richard, a big glass of Pepsi would like with it. Plates and glasses were sparkling clean or, uh, or ceremony clean, ceremonially clean, but the food that goes in it, it's like a buzzard. <laughs> you got clean utensils, you got a clean bowl, but they're not worried about what's in it as long as the outside of it shines. Yeah. Out, outwardly, the Pharisees gave the appearance of loving devotion to the Lord, but on the inside, they were full of immorality and spiritual filth. They were full of robbery, full of self-indulgence. Jesus tells them to clean the inside of the cup and the dish first. Because no plate, no utensil, or cup is clean as it holds nasty food or drink. That's right. And after I studied that, or after I looked at it, I thought, you know, that's, that's a lesson of modern, or a lesson of that time and culture. And I've tried to prepare for this for three weeks, and I have... Uh, since I've been teaching, I feel this has been most unprepared time that I've ever taught. But I went into the next chapter, 
as I said, and Jesus gives a warning, a, a prophetic warning for what I feel is today's time. <coughs> and it says, take heed that no man deceive you. He's talking to the disciples because they're asking, when shall these times come? He's talking about the temple being destroyed. He's mm -hmm. talking about wars and rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, all that. And they're asking, when will these times come? And he gives them a warning to take <clears throat> heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive men. And he shall hear, ye shall hear of wars, rumors of wars, See that you be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And then on down, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And lastly, and because iniquity shall abound in love for many shall wax cold. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Another word, a synonym for iniquity is lawlessness. I can tell you that standing here with right at 20 years in the state police, I have never seen a day in time like I see today. Amen, brother. And I'm not going into my job. I don't try to make it a habit to come here and discuss that, and nor do I want to talk about it. But I can tell you, Things have progressively gotten worse year after year. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. Things have exceedingly gotten so much worse for my line of work over the past <coughs> two years that it's troublesome. Uh -huh. When I read this, I say it's time. You see it. Mm -hmm. These, mm -hmm. these are time. And uh the love of many shall wax cold. We're here. Yeah. I really believe that. Uh, Me too. And as I said the last time I was here, Wednesday before last, again, I'm thankful that I've come to church here. I'm thankful <coughs> that I have the, uh, thankful that my mom and dad brought me up in church. Amen. I remember, uh, as a kid going to revivals, tent meetings, Dwight McClure, Danny Kinder, <laughs> the likes of Eugene McAllister, yeah. I remember Harbor Lights. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that old gospel. And I come here and I get that same <coughs> thing. You're right, man. And uh, because recently in my travels, I've come into a lot of people that are to be Christians, and I don't argue that. I know that one of the most highly debated things is uh, once in grace and always in grace, yeah. or uh, you can backslide. <coughs> I can tell you, I backslid one time when I was, after I was 15, I was saved, and I didn't feel like I was saved yeah. when I knelt down here at the altar until I knelt down to the altar. But the more I talk to people, the more you get a different version of Christianity. I've recently said that there's been a couple of preachers that's taken a look at the gospel and taken a look at the modern time and said we need to make a change in how we teach and how we preach. And yeah, brother. It's You're been right. suggested that you uh -huh. do away with the blood. Uh -huh. It's been suggested that we modify our worship services to accommodate people who are of a younger generation, and I think I've never found in the Bible, and I read it, and I'm not a scholar on it, and I wish I were. I've never scratched the surface on it, but I've never seen where Jesus or anybody modified the gospel Nobody. and bent Nobody. the word to make it fit someone's life. Right. It's the right. problem that I see now, because I sit and wonder, and I have I thought about Richard said something a long time ago when I was talking to this boy. The other day, he was talking about, well, I go to church. When I go to church, like our preacher said one time, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage for a week makes you a Jeep. Yeah. Right. And uh, I asked you before I, as Richard comes, 
If you're here, come on, Andy. Are you sure you're saved? Come on, Andy. Go. Are you sure the word that you're getting is a true undefiled, unmitigated come on, my brother. word of God? Yeah, yeah. brother. Bless my heart. Amen. Uh, if it's not, it's here. Yeah. The altar's open. And if you're here this morning and you know you're not saved, there's nothing like it. Amen. Amen. I can't tell you how good it is. It's something that you'll have to try yourself. But I'm telling you, it works. It works. It makes a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. 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 Amen.